Um, something interesting to note about this is uh, this girl, grammar girl, is an extremely popular blogger in her own right, and she is responsible for 60% uh, of their traffic. So another thing to remember in building your vertical communities is that personalities drive traffic. Um, so this grammar girl uh, accounts for more than half the traffic that this site gets. Uh, by the same token, Shut Simon and Schuster has a site, uh, Tips on Healthy Living. Um, now one thing you will notice is that they, they do a little bit differently, is they very quickly let you know who they are. They're branding themselves there. They're still providing a service, but they want you to know that that service is being provided by Simon and Schuster. So people are like, oh, I like Simon and Schuster, they're the ones that I go to to get my healthy living tips. Um, opinions differ on whether people should do that or not. In my personal experience, I have not done that, and I'm not quite sure that, that was the right thing to do. I think I wish I branded my sites a little bit more than I have, so um, I don't know if I'd come right out front and centre and say who I was at the start, but, you know, each to their own. And it's very good if you're not sure if you have an addiction or not, you can come and find out here. It's a good tip. Okay, lastly, and this is the one that most people associate vertical communities with, um, is hobbyist and professional sites. These are the ones that I've mostly been speaking about. They're very category driven, uh, and they're very driven by a community that wants to participate. So the content has to be strong, it has to be a nerve center of good content, deep content, detailed content, uh, and it has a lot of active participation. Uh, people come here to participate, they come here to socialize. They're here to be, you know, my, my personal experience is in photography, uh, a lot of people love to take photos, uh, but most people don't get paid to take photos, but they want to come and share how they take a photo, the angle they took, stuff like that, and I'll get into that a little bit more. But some sites that do that well, uh, from us, now, if anyone here is in travel publishing, um, in Brazil, I'm not sure if there is anyone here, if you are, you need a vertical very quickly, because travel books, uh, one of the first books going, at least in North America, Australia, England, and the English-speaking world, because you don't need a lonely planet guide to buy to get travel information anymore. It's not only outdated, and you can get anything like that on Google. So Promise has acted quickly. They put all their, most of their content on this website. A lot of it's free of charge, a lot of it's subscription-based, and then it's a pay for extra content. Um, and they have a community. So they also have things like um, Trip Recommender. So people come here not just to get you know hotel details and stuff like that, but they can have other travellers, people that have just been, so I was in Rio last week, I came here to look, someone said, I was in Rio two months ago, you should go hang gliding. I wish I could find them and tell them that I shouldn't have done that because it scared the living hell out of me, but it was a good place to find some ideas on what to do in Rio. But I happen to believe, again, personal opinion, that if you're in travel publishing, you need a vertical community very quickly. You are ahead of the curve in how quickly people are adapting to this, if they haven't already. I apologise if it's already happening here. Um, now, Writer's Digest is a very simple site. I wanted to highlight this because this publisher, FMW Media, who actually runs uh, Digital Book World in New York, so this, the equivalent of this Congress in New York City is put on by FMW Media, who are the publishers. They have actually restructured their entire publishing strategy to build verticals. This is one of their verticals, Writer's Digest. They have 25 of these. Um, they have templated it. I am making a very educated guess that they achieve huge economies of scale so that every website costs them a lot less because they're doing a lot of them so they get better and better as they build more. But this is their business model. Um, they, you know, they built their own e-commerce engine. They, uh, they actively build subscription lists, build their email lists. They're active on social media. They run events based around their vertical community. Um, in, but it's always very deep topics. They curate content so that they have deep content on specific subjects, like Writer's Digest. They also have a deer hunting one. They have uh, graphic design, they have gardening, they have uh, woodworking, uh, lots of craft sites. They're, but it's all very niche and very vertical. Um, and that, they basically rearrange their business to where verticals is their main focus. More so than magazines, which is what they also publish in books. Verticals has become their number one business. So it was worth showing you that just to talk about F and W. 